Every Tuesday and Thursday, Tim Ord comes on. This is Tim Ord of the Ord-Oracle.com. Strongly recommend checking out uh, the past archives that we have on our YouTube channel. Subscribe and give us a like while you're there. Uh, if you go over to TFNN.com, you can hit services. And right here, we have two of Tim Ord's uh, past webinars. These are fantastic. So one, the secret science of market tops. That's kind of figure out when it's going to top, what's going on with that. And the six secret ratios every trader should know. Strongly recommend it. Uh, we have Tim Ward on today. We got some interesting stuff to talk about, Tim. Tim, how are you doing? Good, good. Yeah, let's, uh, let's get right to it. So, Absolutely. Uh, look, you know, we talked about this lag breath thrust indicator. Yeah. And I was hoping though to kick in. And it actually did reach its parameters. It went, um, went from, it had, his lag press thrust indicator had to go from minus 40 to a point, or a point 40 to point 60 in 10 days to trigger that, um, short term bullish, uh, setup. Well, this one took 12 days. It's not as bullish, but it still leans bullish. You know, it did get to the parameters, but it took two more days than, um, than ideally, I guess you might say. So it, it leans bullish. There's nothing bearish about it, but it's not as bullish if it reaches those parameters in 10 days. So I want to point that out. Um, first chart um, is the uh, top window is the NYSE McCollin, um, McCollin Oscillator. And this is another low indicator. It's a little bit longer term. Uh, this one takes about a month to trigger if it's going to get triggered. And the uh, and when this happens, if you look at the chart, this chart goes back to 2017, mm -hmm. seven or uh, yeah, 2000 mid 17, and the bottom window is the SPX, and the red line there is when the McCollin Oscillator hits below minus 300, that sets up the potential uh, bullish indicator. Then it has to rally to plus 300 within 30 days, and so that's the blue line there. And it shows you all the times that in, when you see the blue or the red and the blue, those were triggers. Uh, if you just see the red lines there, it gave uh, the setup. It never completed the uh, the buy signal, I guess you might say. We do have a setup right now. It triggered on August sixth or uh, April sixteenth. This indicator did get below minus three hundred. Now between now and May sixteenth, which we got another approximately about a week to go. And if it reaches plus 300, that opens the door. Probably we're in the midst of an intermittent term rally. So we look like the rally for, you know, at least several more months, if not even longer. So as of today, we're at plus 127.74. It doesn't count today what's going on because we've got an advanced climb right now of about, uh, about about two and a half to, uh, to one to the upside. So this uh, McCall and Oscar is going to rise today. It probably won't get to plus 300. We'll need a, a couple of strong days between now and next Wednesday to trigger this indicator. So for this to trigger, the market in general has to be going up here. And so far, uh, it's doing, it's kind of a lackluster here the last three, four days, the last three days. And uh, that may speed up because I think this indicator is going to get triggered. So if it does get triggered, what does that mean for the market? Well, we've probably got a, an all clear, uh, at least at a minimum through July and possibly all the way to September. Uh, it's hard to say, but uh, it opened for the door for the short term that uh, this month will be up, next month will be up, probably July will be up at a minimum. Uh, so let's go to chart two. Absolutely. So the swag breath. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's a swag thing. And actually, I already hit it on it. It did reach the parameters, but it didn't, which is the bottom window. Uh, we did get below 0.4 and we did get above 0.6, but it took us 12 days instead of 10 days. Still bullish, but not quite as bullish you like to see. So, right. um, the, so anyhow, it didn't trigger, but it still leaned bullish. So let's, let's flip to chart three. Okay, give me one second. Let's see here. You know, I would also like to see at some point, um, you know, we, we're familiar with it, with it here at TFNN, but maybe like a webinar for the Zwag Breath or something like that. I mean, these would be cool. The McClellan Oscillators. Regardless, we have chart three up. Um, I'm curious to see what yeah, we have to talk yeah, about I, here. I could do that. Matter of fact, there's a, there's, there's, you really get the bullish. 
in, in the market, you have to to get a bottom. You have to go through a selling climax. Uh-huh. If the market's going down and you're not producing a selling climax, market's going to keep down, going down until it does reach a selling climax. Then once it reaches a selling climax, it has to go right into a buying climax or a sign of strength. If it doesn't go into a sign of strength, you're going to see some more selling climaxes uh, until finally the market at some point finds a sign of strength. Okay. And that's how the market bottoms. That's the reason why there's a lag breath thrust indicator, the McCollin oscillator uh, type indicators, and the summation type, type indicators signal when you have a selling climax that switches back into a buying climax and that bottoms and that puts the bottom in the market. So right that's on. the only way you can get a bottom in a market. So, um, but yeah, we could, I'd love to do a, a seminar on that. And there's two, uh, three different, the, those categories I'm talking about is wag, breast, thrust, a thrust indicator, McCollum oscillator, and the summation oscillator are different time frames. Uh-huh. Those. Uh, so you like to have all three time frames uh, kick in to really get a, a high probability uh, uh, bottom. So I, I see we're about up up here. Yeah, so. awesome. No, I was just listening. That's that's good stuff. You know, we already have one in the market tops as well. But um, perfect. Well, Tim, stay stay right there. We'll be right back. Welcome back, folks. We're with uh, Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle currently. Uh, Tim, we were actually on chart three right now. Let's look at some Bollinger Bands and everything else you got on here. Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, chart three, is, uh, actually, when I look at the bottom window, uh, this is the uh, uh, monthly SPX VIX ratio. And so what this good for is picking out highs in the market. And uh, it always picks out large uh, declines. Some the smaller declines, sometimes yes, sometimes no, but most of the time, it, it focuses, since it's on a monthly chart, it looks for the big declines that may be uh, coming forward. So, but anyhow, how this set up is when this, when the SPX is making higher highs and the SPX ratio makes lower highs, that's a negative divergence. Chances are you're probably going to go into uh, some sort of a high and it could be a significant high. Mm-hmm. Last time this thing was triggered was back in, it looks like a Jan or uh, December of 2021. Uh, the market was making higher highs. That ratio was making lower highs. Uh, going up into the April high, this really never triggered. Uh, the ratio made higher highs, and the uh, SP made higher highs. Even though you had a April pullback, it didn't suggest that you were going into an imminent term top. That's the reason I kind of just remained bullish. And um, we have another sign there, too. Uh, I got a or, uh, March circle there. Yes. Uh, the reason why I circled it is when the uh, trading range, uh, uh, let's see, uh, you know, when half of the trading range is above the upper Bollinger Band, when, the, when that happens, you get a trigger, and, and that predicts the next month will be a down month, So, you, which we did. We announced it on the show that probably April will be a down month. It wasn't, but it shouldn't be any big decline because we did not see any SPX VIX ratio showing any divergence. And so he went down one month, now we're coming back. And I just want to point out today, today, you know, month is just beginning here, mm-hmm. where we're into over a week here. And the ratio currently, when I put this chart on, uh, is uh, 41.61. The, the last high, which would be April, was 43, uh, 43.86. In other words, we're, two, we're, only, we're less than two points from a high, even though the SPs have not hit a high, the SPX, the SPX ratio is almost, uh, it may hit a high here short term, and it's almost setting as high right now. That's usually a bullish sign if the ratio kind of leads the SPX. And so if this ratio hits SPX, that's yes, at a minimum, we're going to hit new highs on the SPI, SPY, or SPX here in this case. So uh, it looks promising, haven't quite done it, uh, yeah, but the month's still early, so chances are we're probably going to hit new highs here in May. Um, so you know that's you know it's, it's a continuation type thing. So it looks good. Mm-hmm. There's nothing I see worrisome right now in the market. So if you're long, you stay long. Let's flip the chart four, right. if you would. All right, we got that up right now. All right, this is a short-term indicator, and the, it's the uh, 
second window down from the top is the SPX tilt ratio. And so on a daily chart, so you're combining the equity market with the bond market. And this indicator is only geared for the short term. And what I really want to point out is when this ratio goes up too fast, the RSI gets up around 70 and higher, normally you get a short-term pullback. And all those blue lines across the chart are times when this RSI for this ratio got above 70. So it only predicts short-term, you know, maybe three, four, five days at most for a pullback. Well, so far, this ratio, uh, when I made this chart, is uh, 56 on the RSI. So it's, even on a short-term basis here, I'm not seeing any signs that the market's going to run any trouble even for a three, four, five-day pullback. It's just not happening here. So, I mean, maybe for the weeks out, this RSI may jump up there, but as of today, it has not. And um, so even on a short-term basis here, uh, uh, there's no even inkling of a, of a, a short-term decline. So... Uh, even on a short-term basis, is, is up. So not seeing any signs of what I'm trying to say. Uh, I thought at one point, I don't have it shown here, but there's a gap, I think, that formed on um, April 13th or somewhere in there, uh, which is around that uh, 415, 418 area. I thought we might run into that gap and stop, but uh, we're not even doing that. We're, we're actually exceeded that gap now. So how high is high, I don't know, but uh, we're going to go higher. Uh, short term and intermediate term. So let's, let's get down to the meat of the things here on, on yep. chart five. This is this is starting to be really interesting. What's going on here? This is this chart's actually starting to, is actually kicking in right now as we're talking. And it's kind of been hinting at kicking in over the last month or two, but now it's actually doing it. Anyhow, the bottom window is the monthly XAU gold ratio going back to 1984. And I drew a trend line from the top of, of uh, 2000 or 1996 all the way down to the current time frame. To get above this trend line, it needs to get above 0.6, 0. 0.6 or 0.06. And right now, we're actually 0.061. But the month's not over yet. So this is a monthly chart. You have to wait for the monthly to close. If it closes up 0.6 or higher, then I'm saying we're breaking this trend line. And that's going to change the dramatics of the of the of the gold market because basically this this indicator, in other words, gold stocks in general have been weaker than gold going back to 1996. Now that may be reversing here. There were gold stocks maybe stronger. Uh, than gold going forward from here on for the next probably several years. Because if you look at the chart there at the bottom window, uh, that XAU gold ratio in general has pretty much been going sideways since 2014. It'd go up a little bit, down a little bit, but really not going anywhere. Well, the low volatility precedes high volatility. So the market's been really narrow trading range and that volatility is probably going to pick up. And that volatility, in my opinion, is going to pick up to the upside. And there's a lot of different indicators I can show you the reason why that's going to happen. Yeah. But uh, uh, the, the next um, surge, and and, and pr- probably this, uh, the gold market, in my opinion, is probably even going to fly out out uh, perform the equity market. Uh, you know the. Uh, so I don't know it's going to be interesting uh, going forward what's what's going to happen here. And if you look at the uh, uh, not the top top charts RSI next window down, it's inflation deflation ratio. It's a totally different indicator, different parameters, different everything. And it's also up against that. I drew a dotted trend line there, and it looks like it's maybe crossing that trend line also. If you notice also that range has been extremely narrow since 2015. So I'll hold. Yeah, yeah. Hold on to the next uh, segment. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. What is going on, folks? This is Jacob Shoup uh, filling in for Tom O'Brien. We're actually with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Uh, Tim, we got a few more charts left here. Uh, we're looking at gold before we went to break. Right. So uh, so chart five. Yep. This is a monthly chart, so you got to look at the, you know what's, what's the bigger picture. The bigger picture is, is right on the money as far as... Um, uh, leaning bullish on a longer-term scenario. So 
Let's flip to chart six. Yep. Okay, this is another indicator. Uh, uh, the bottom window is the, uh, yeah, this is a monthly chart, too. This chart just actually measures the momentum of the up-down volume and measures the momentum of advanced decline for GDX. So it's all the technical, what happens inside GDX. So, uh, well, yeah, so the, the, the bottom window is the cumulative advanced decline for up-down volume. And I put a Bollinger Band on it, and when the Bollinger, when the, um, uh, this indicator closes above the uh, mid-Bollinger Band, a uh, buy signal is triggered. When it closes below the mid-Bollinger Band, it's a sell signal. And so right now, we got a sell signal back in January or late December, of uh, 2021 and pretty much remained on a sell signal uh, until now. Now over to the right is a blown up window of, the, of those indicators. So the bottom window, I, I guess you're right on the money. You're right on the Bollinger Band. Next one up is the advanced decline uh, cumulative on a monthly time frame, And you see there it's way above its mid Bollinger Band. So that's on a buy. And the next window up, is the uh, monthly GDX GLE ratio. You always want gold stocks to outperform gold, and that's what happens in bull markets. So when this ratio is rising, it's a bullish sign for the gold and gold stocks. And it's, and it's been rising here for the last couple of months. And now we're right smack at the Bollinger Band. You know, But again, this is on a monthly chart. But this is what's supposed to happen compared to the chart we've seen on chart number five. So this is kind of confirming what's going on inside the gold market. So this is totally unrelated, different indicators here, and they're giving all the same sign. So if you look at uh, the top window there, which is GDX, and I think this is a head and shoulders bottom, and we're at the neckline right now. And I think uh, to get through a neckline, you need a sign of strength, that's, which is basically high volume and strong price move to get through that neckline. And it hasn't happened yet, but I'm thinking it's probably going to happen. So I don't see any top here. I think actually the market's going to see an acceleration. Um, so let's, let's flip to chart seven. All right, we are cooking. All right. Chart seven is the, let's see, what's this, the daily? I think it's the daily. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a daily chart. So anyhow, the top chart on chart six was a monthly. So I took it down and looked at smaller time frames, what's going on. And this is the daily. The bottom window is, is not the cumulative, but it was just up down volume with an 18 day average. Next higher window is the 18 day average of advanced decline. So in general, when these two indicators are above minus 10, the market's in an uptrend. So it gave a buy signal back in looks like March 1st or something, you know, first part of March and remains on a buy signal, uh, even though the, the market over the last month really hadn't gone anywhere on GDX. It's kind of gone sideways. But if you do Elliott Wave, I'm thinking this is probably a wave four going on. What comes up next is wave five. Well, wave five, a lot of times, is the strongest part of the move of a five Elliott Wave up. Uh, but also it's an ending wave, too. So whatever ends a five wave up, you'll see some sort of consolidation. And that's the reason why, if you go back to chart six, yep. If you can flip back and forth, that absolutely, yeah. That's the reason. Why, that's the reason why I'm thinking you're going to see a sign of strength here. I think wave five of the Elliott wave is is starting. I don't know. Has, it's, it could be even starting today. I don't know, or it could start next week. Don't know, uh, but it's going to start here pretty quick. And you're going to see a sign of strength probably jump through that trend line, which is around 34, the neckline. Uh, then you get a chart. Then you get a, an ABC down, probably back down to 34. Then a more rally uh, throughout, you know, in my opinion, for a while. And now, can we yeah. go back to chart five? Yeah. Or We're there so far, chart five. See, wait, wait a minute. Not, not chart five. Yeah, it's chart six. I'm sorry. Yeah, we were just on chart okay, six. We were on chart. All yeah. right. Yep. So I want to point out this, too. These signals on the, the up-down volume advanced decline on a monthly time frame are long-term signals. Once they generate a signal on a monthly time frame, they're usually at least a year and a half. 
and they can be four. The last signal it generated on, on chart six now was back in January 2021. It's just starting now to flip bullish. So that's over three years ago. That was on a sell signal. So even though some gold stocks did go up and go down, most gold stocks didn't perform very well at all. Mm -hmm. uh, according to this chart, you know, it's, it's, well, that's going to change. Instead of a few stocks kind of leading up and down, the majority of gold stocks is going to go up here. And the signal is going to last a while. So at least probably a year, most likely uh, maybe two, three years. So uh, this market's actually been turning since actually last October. And it actually started getting bullish signs last August. I got some bullish signs. Market never really went up, but didn't go back down. It just kind of went up and sideways. Right. And now you're st it's starting to see... Um, the market is starting to accelerate to the upside. And its acceleration is probably going to get stronger short-term rather than weaker. So, uh, And it's going to say, or you're going to have consolidations throughout, but you're going to have periods that probably going to look like uh, um, I don't know, 2019, or 2016, or even go back to 2000, um, you know, seven and back in, you know, when the gold stocks were the vogue back then. Uh, so I'm, I'm thinking the, the the choppiness of these gold stocks is ending, and uh, yeah. a true trending market uh, is starting. And so back in 2000, I, I remember it called the, the bottom of that gold market, and I, I remember my portfolio almost, I think, doubled almost in the first year. Yeah. These things just really just took off, and it was common to see – Stocks go 10 for one. I remember, I don't know, Tom will remember it, but I had BGO at a quarter or 30 cents. I can't remember oh. exactly what price, but it was below 50 cents. It went to $15. Yeah, no kidding. So I'm, so, so I'm thinking similar things are going to happen like that again, because when the gold market gets hot, it gets really hot. And when it gets cold, it gets really cold. Yes. So I'm thinking we're ending the cold season and now getting going into at least a warm season. And it could turn hot uh, down the road here. So. And we have a we have a viewer actually on YouTube as well. She's asking if there's any scenario within this kind of analysis where you could see something like a stronger correction before we resume this kind of upward momentum uh, we've been seeing. No, I'm thinking if if you go if you look on this chart six again, we're yep. right at that neckline, and I'm thinking since we're staying on the neckline, and neckline is not showing a rejection to it, yep. I think it's ex absorbing the buy orders. And so I think that wave five is, is coming. Uh, then after that, I think we'll see a, a pullback, but going back down to where we are right now. So I'm thinking we're going to rally to 40, maybe 45 if we get lucky, then probably a pullback down to, to the neckline. Sure. Tim, thank you so much for joining us. Great as always. All right. Hey, thank folks, you. we'll be right back.